the St. John's congregation, my name is Mark Peterson. I'm the music director at Hillcrest United Church, and I'm so excited to share some music with you for this morning's joint service. The first piece we're going to share features the Hillcrest Choir, the small but mighty Hillcrest Choir, who have done just an unbelievable job of pivoting into this brand new world of virtual music making as a result of the pandemic. I think it's probably fair to say there are members of the choir that had never before taken a selfie, let alone recorded themselves singing as part of a virtual anthem. So I'm really grateful for everyone's um, ability and willingness to dive into this new world. We are going to be performing a worship song for you called Mighty to Save. It's a choir favorite and we hope you enjoy. service with St. John's. Hi, I'm Jennifer Cardwell, Chair of St. John's. We're excited to have this opportunity to collaborate with Hillcrest. Enjoy the service. Let us pray. O loving God, as we gather here in our homes and in our workplaces, May we know that you are always at our side. We look to the light, to God's light and Christ's light, Spirit's light, the light within. 
we look to the ever rising sun and are so grateful for its presence today. Knowing that as darkness comes upon us, we can trust that the sun will shine again each morning. We look to the wisdom of Grandmother Moon and listen in stillness to her guidance. We look to our earth for hope and life and we look to each other, new friends and longtime friends, and we walk side by side. We look to you, God, for your presence is always near us. And on our next breath, may we feel you and know you, see and sense the supporting nature enveloping us and guiding us in our days. We are carried through connecting with loved ones in different ways. We look at the space around us with fresh eyes, inspired to do good and be good, seeing all possibilities. May we take that inspiration and find new ways to be a vessel for you, God. We are not alone. Amen. Good morning. 
Today's reading is Psalm 20. I'm reading from the Good News Bible, a prayer for victory. May the Lord answer you when you're in trouble. May the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from his temple and give you aid from Mount Zion. May he accept all your offerings and be pleased with all your sacrifices. May he give you what you desire and make all your plans succeed. Then we will shout for joy over your victory and celebrate your triumph by praising our God. May the Lord answer all our requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his chosen king. <clears throat> he answers him from his holy heaven and by his power gives him great victories. Some trust in their war chariots and others in their horses, but we trust in the power of the Lord our God. Such people will stumble and fall, but we will rise and stand firm. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Bless these words to our use and understanding. Mark 4, verse 26 to 34. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed spurts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first a stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle into it, sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such, as, such big branches 
that the birds of the air can perch on its in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. As much as they could understand, he did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. Thank you, Caroline and Aiden. My name is Norm Hennig Pereira, and I'm on the ministry staff of St. John's United Church of Georgetown and Glen Williams. It's a pleasure today to be a part of this service with Hillcrest United Church. Our theme for the service is Planting Seeds of Hope. The psalm we heard today is a blessing and a prayer for a people, for their safety and for their success. The psalmist writes, May we shout for joy over your victory, and, the name of our, and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord, our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. In terms of growth as a people, growth in faith, the psalmist is very clear. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have, but it's about the one in whom you trust, the one whose wisdom you follow, the values you hold. It is how you live out that connection with God how you live out that loving wisdom and those values. It's about the source of your life. In the reading from Mark today, we have this, he continues this notion of source of life and growth, in Mark's case with seed parables. Mark has a thing for agriculture. In fact, there are some who see the parable of the sower in Mark the parable that looks at the growth of plants depending on the condition of the soil, whether it's rocky, thorny, shallow, or deep, that that parable is central to the Gospel of Mark. In fact, it's around which the whole Gospel is built. And if you understand the parable, you have a better understanding of the Gospel. So in addition to the Psalm today, we heard two seed stories, each reflecting on some aspect of the kingdom or realm of God the parable of the seed growing secretly, and the parable of the mustard seed. The seed growing secretly is connected to the psalm in that it reminds us that how life comes about is a bit of a mystery. But central to life is this connection to a source. We put the seed in the ground. It swells, sends out shoots. Some become roots, some become the stem and leaves. Then there comes this amazing exchange, the roots drawing up water and nutrients from the soil and delivering it out to the leaves, where there's an exchange with the atmosphere, the air and the sun. And those, that exchange, that energy then goes back into the roots and we have this ebb and flow of energy, of growth. It's all connected. For most plants, you do need roots and you do need leaves. You need this connection with the sun, the air, and the earth and water. In terms of this image of agriculture, there's another person that can be involved. And that is the steward of the plants, the one who takes care of them, the farmer. While I was growing up in my teen years, my mom always used to say, you gotta hoe the potatoes when it came to personal progress and growth. What this means is that while there are things that are happening that we have little control over, there are things that are happening that we can do, uh, there are things that we can do to help things along. Potatoes, like any plant, need this connection between the atmosphere through the leaves and the ground through its roots. But there are things that we can do to help potatoes along, to help those tubers get big and large. The earth can be uh, loosened up to make room for those potatoes. The earth can be piled up against the plant in order for a place for the tubers to grow. You don't see them grow, but you know that by piling up the earth and making the earth loose, they can have a chance to grow and grow large. That's what it means to hold the potatoes. Yes, it's important, you see, that there be air, sun, earth, and water, but we can be a part of encouraging growth. As we move forward into life, may we always be aware of our source. That's also part of being a good steward, is knowing that there are other things, other factors that we may not have control over, but that we need to look for. 
we need to continually reach out to the sun, creating energy. May we be building our root systems here in the network of creation. May we have the wisdom to be good stewards of our fields. And in doing this, as we reach out to the sun gathering energy, as we dig our and build strong root systems in the network of creation, we can harvest seeds or maybe spuds of hope. A man went out and planted a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, and a mustard tree grew so large that birds landed in it. This is what is supposed to happen to the church. When even a small number believe and act, and in faith trust God, explosive growth happens. Our church needs to become a mustard tree. We need to become so great that every bird can come and land here. Healthy, beautiful birds, birds with baby birds, birds that are missing their wings, that have been hurt, birds that have no other nest to land in, birds that just want to hang out with other birds. That is what Jesus is calling the church to become. He never said, you have to be a big old tree to begin. No. He said, from the smallest of seeds. I always find it interesting that God often uses small instead of large to demonstrate his power. We often get the mistaken idea that bigger is better. We shouldn't feel like we can't do or become something because we are small. Today, St. John's and Hillcrest gather together in worship. We have worked together, shared resources, and put together our service today. It has been an honor to work with Reverend Norm and his team. What if both congregations only had faith as small as a mustard seed? What if we planted those seeds side by side in the soil? What do you think would happen? Two beautiful mustard trees would grow. Their branches would intertwine, and they would become as one. There would be many branches for many types of birds to come and sit on. By working together, we can grow together, just like those tiny mustard seeds. Amen. The next piece is an arrangement that I wrote combining two very different songs. You'll Never Walk Alone, the Roger and Hammerstein anthem, and above all, a worship song. I wrote the arrangement with two great friends in mind, Karen, who's an awesome singer, and Evan, who's an awesome violinist. We, of course, put this together independently and virtually, and it was great fun working on it with them. So we hope you enjoy this mashup of two very different pieces.
Let us pray for the whole of creation, all people and nations according to their needs, for our friends, family, and neighbors seeking prayer, for those whom we have named in our hearts. Loving, compassionate God, we praise you for your goodness, you who knew us and loved us even before we were born. You delight in us, and no matter our age or our health, our schooling, our status, or how we identify ourselves, we matter to you, our lifelong guide and friend. Help us to love as you love. Help us to follow Jesus' example of unconditional love for all. We give you thanks for communities of faith, places where we hear your word, are encouraged by your love and spirit through our friends and families, and where we are comforted in times of trouble or sorrow. Places where we show your love for the world through acts of compassion and love. We give you thanks for our congregations of Hillcrest and St. John's, for our histories, and for the faithful who have gone before and served you throughout the generations. We give you thanks for the blessings we bring to and to receive from our communities. As we continue to plant seeds of hope, seeds of faith, bless their growth. Give us faith during these times when growth happens secretly. O oh God, like the tiny mustard plant, give us your roots. You tell us that faith as small as a grain of a mustard seed is always enough. Remind us now that our prayers and actions, as small as they appear to be to us, will always be enough. If they are offered in a spirit of devotion, a willingness to be guided by your wisdom, and cared for through compassionate and loving action. Dig down deep into the soul of our communities. Help us to grow strong leaves, strong root systems. In your grace, may we grow into so large a plant that we indeed become a place for all people to gather, where our, all our ideas and actions, all our loves are nestled and sheltered in our branches. May all of creation find a place to dwell in our shade. We give you thanks for the beauty of creation. We pray for the well-being of our wider family, our fellow creatures and creation on earth. For one with four legs or many legs, the ones that fly, the ones that swim, the ones with leaves and the ones so small we cannot see. We are all one family in your creation. Encourage us to be the loving, caring, and compassionate stewards you call us to be. May we see this planet through your loving, caring eyes. We pray for those who suffer violence because of their faith, the color of their skin, their place of origin, or for whom they love. We especially remember today the Afzal Salman families, their friends and their community. May we work together to bring about healing in our land. May we encourage our governments to work with us in seeing the worth and dignity of every person. May we remove racism and hatred from our lives. We continue to pray for our frontline workers, those administering vaccines and those caring for the sick. We pray for those who are grieving a loss of a loved one, for those seeking healing, going through difficult times, undergoing medical procedures or convalescing from illness. We pray for Ross and his family, for Sandra, Carla, Karen, Rob, Catherine, Jerry, Betty, Gwen, Rena, and Ray, as well as those whom we name now in the silence. May they know the love that enfolds them from those around them. Grant wisdom and understanding to all their caregivers.
We give thanks for the blessing of everyone gathered and watching this program. May the light of creation shine upon us, and may love envelop each one of us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of the profound depth of love that surrounds and supports us and the whole of creation. May the pure light within each one of us guide us. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. Hear our prayers with the prayers of your whole creation through Christ as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. I hope you enjoyed our program today. Thank you to our brothers and sisters at Hillcrest United Church, to Jennifer, Aidan, John, Mark, and the Hillcrest Choir for their contributions today. Thank you, too, to our St. John's participants, to Janice and Ken, our tech team, to Jennifer, Caroline, Catherine, Sandy, Marilyn, and Marcia, and the St. John's Choir. And a special thank you to you for joining us today. We hope that you will like our program and subscribe both to the Hillcrest YouTube channel as well as St. John's YouTube channel, so that you will know when the next video is uploaded. Please feel free to leave a comment in our YouTube channel or Facebook page. We always enjoy hearing from you. We'd also like to ask you to please consider making a donation to Hillcrest or St. John's and support the great ministries that these churches are doing. Your donation makes a great difference in people's lives as we plant seeds of hope for today and for tomorrow. As we go into this day and this week, we go knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God, that the Spirit lives within each one of us to empower and encourage us. And we have Jesus as a guide and friend. Amen. <laughs>